So you're thinking of becoming an automation analyst and you want to know what they do. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the role of an automation analyst. We'll look at what they do when it comes to finding and assessing opportunities to automate, mapping processes, designing solutions, and how to get that bot built and getting the robot built. Once you understand the junior business analyst role, you can see if this is for you and you can take these steps on how to get started to secure a job. So the RPA business analyst or the robotic process automation analyst is a very lucrative and interesting career. It's the hottest, fastest growing industry and you'll definitely future proof your career with these skills because they're in massive demand right now and for a long time and most definitely in the future as the demand for automation continues to grow and you might have to change your number to stop job agencies calling you. Hi guys, I, welcome back to another video and if you don't know me, I'm Tony and this is Lean IA. This is Intelligent Automation Simplified. So I want to simplify intelligent automation for you so that you as a business leader or professional can get more involved in automation and start optimizing your business and your working life. If you're looking to learn more about intelligent automation, get more involved, future-proof your career, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as I release new videos every week. So when getting started as an automation analyst, it helps to have a traditional business analyst background. It's not needed and there's a lot of training out there on this, but it does help to understand how to engage with the business to elicit requirements, to get the requirements that they need for the automation solution that you want to build. So the automation business analyst role is central position. So the career has massive potential on where it can take you. And it's really rewarding to make significant impact in the business that you're working for. So as an analyst, you're there, you're responsible for translating the business's problems and pains and whatever issues they're experiencing into a technical solution. So you want to understand exactly what they're experiencing right now and what they do right now so that you can work with the developer to build a fit for purpose solution. So you're liaising between these two teams, the developer team and the business team. We're also not there to dictate the solution because these the subject matter experts, they have the ideas and they are the ones that understand the process. You and you working with the developer have your tech knowledge to guide the teams in arriving at the right solution. But then you create this process definition document to formally detail the process that they're doing and start to map out and the solution that they want the automation to build. So your goal is to start gathering process details and team details so that you can start to assess the landscape of what's going on in the team and start to find where the best opportunities for automation are. You're also responsible for mapping the processes using BPMN or swim lanes to show exactly what the steps and decision points are through that process and who the actors are, who are responsible for which steps throughout that process. You'll also be responsible for running workshops. This is to uncover the team problems and pains and the root causes that's really driving whatever problems are being experienced. And it's really important as an RPA analyst that you have good knowledge of how an RPA robot works but also how it's built. Even if you don't know how to build it yourself, you need to know how the automation is put together. And as an, as an analyst, you'll be there to assist the lead analyst on other activities as well. So the lead analyst who you'd be supporting would be responsible for a few other things. They'll be leading the activities of the workshops and the opportunity assessments. The lead analyst will be responsible for leading the discovery workshops to understand where the opportunities are, but then also the opportunities assessments to make sure that these opportunities are suitable for automation and are worthwhile. They have a good return. They will provide a good return on investment and value back to the business. And then also leading root cause and solution design workshops as well. And so as a junior analyst, you'll be responsible for supporting the, the lead analyst 
providing data, working with the team to gather data to support those workshops and get those opportunities identified. In small teams, the lead analyst may be responsible for evangelizing the technologies by creating roadshows to go out and talk to the different business teams about what this technology is, how it can benefit them, and putting together some demonstrations and some use cases to present to um, business leaders, but also teams, team staff teams as well, on how this technology can be used for their business and to instill a sense of urgency for why they, they need to get involved straight away. To get that buy-in so that when the projects start, you have the team support so that projects can run a lot smoother. So depending on the size of your automation team, you may be the one who's responsible for that PDD, the process definition document. And you may be responsible for completing that full thing. Or you may be supporting the senior business analyst for developing the PDD. Either way, you'll be collecting the data, working with the team, mapping out the process and getting those keystroke documents. But you'll be responsible for mapping the process and gathering all the details, the minute details of the process for that documentation. And we have a PDD process definition document video. So make sure you check that out because the PDD as a business analyst is the most important tool that your role will use. So do check that out. So once you've gathered the requirements of the, the team, you will also continue to support the developer as they continue to develop the, the application and design the application and develop it by gathering further details that the developer needs to ensure that they fully understand what they're building. So you'll be liaising between the developer and the and the business team to answer all the questions that are needed. And then going on to after the robot has been built, you'll be supporting the business in testing the automation during what's called the UN phase or the user acceptance testing phase. This is where you're working with the, the business team to help them test the robot to make sure it is robust, it's fit for purpose, and it does exactly what they want it to. So in small teams, business, senior business analysts also play the role of the project manager where they're not only analyzing the opportunity and getting it to the developer to build but they're supporting they're managing that whole project to make sure that that project goes through to delivery so the lead business analyst will be managing the project and will be leaning on you to help support that management making sure that you're following up the right stakeholders, you're, you're engaging with the right stakeholders, the robot and the developer have the right accesses to the applications, all the details of that project. Um, you'll be responsible for helping gather, line things up and, and chase, chase the right people so that the developer has everything that they need to, um, to build that. And you'll be working with the team to make sure that they're also available at the right time to, to answer the developer's questions and to test the robots as well. There's a lot more things that the lead analyst would do compared to the junior analyst, but you'll be there to support, him, to support them through these different activities. So now let's zoom into the key aspects of the analyst role. So the first thing is finding and assessing opportunities to automate. So the lead analyst would have gone out there and done some discovery work with the teams or, or the department, heads of department, the senior stakeholders, to understand where in the business the opportunities are, which teams um, are, are ready for automation and may have good opportunities. And if there are any specific use cases that teams want to automate straight away. Once that's been established, you'll be deployed to go in to the team and start collecting data, starting to understand who, what, and how teams and the processes work. So you'd be looking at analyzing documents around that process so that before you've even approached the teams, you have a good base knowledge of what that the processes are, what the processes are, all about before you start to dive into the detail. 
because remember the teams have limited time so you want to prepare before you have those in, those limited engagements then you would run workshops or support the running of workshops to gather the right information that you need because you want to know certain metrics like volume of work time to complete the process if there's any seasonal spikes you would also want to understand the KPIs of a process. What's the error rate? Are there any fines? Any third party costs? What about attrition rate, customers or clients? Then you want to compile a checklist table to make to assess that the opportunities are suitable, just like this one. The lead analyst may want you and the other junior analyst to feed this into a central table. They can start to design a, a map of all the opportunities throughout a team or department or the business as a whole so that they working with the senior stakeholders can pick out the best opportunities to start automating once the shortlist of the best opportunities have been shortlisted you'll be reassigned back to go in and start mapping the process like we've already said you've done some document analysis and these documents may be old but at least you have something to start with instead of working on a blank canvas and so you'll be responsible for mapping the process as is then working with the team to refine that process map to what it is right now because these documents may be old and the process may have moved on and there's some videos about process mapping that you can find you can find below the number one approach to make sure you're capturing the the right process as it is now is not to just rely on speaking with the teams, but it's to shadow them as well. And this is literally where you're sitting with them, watching them and, and asking questions as they do the process and mapping that out and revising the as is process that you created uh, prior to your meeting. Because the team members do these processes time and time again, a thousand times a day, so they do miss steps they may not describe the exact minutia um, of everything that they do because it's second nature to them so having fresh pair of eyes your fresh pair of eyes sitting next to them and watching what they do and asking the questions then you can be confident that what you've mapped down is what they do right now then with a senior analyst you can run a workshop to confirm that that is as a consensus that's how the team does it even if that that process is not automate is not uh, doesn't go on to be automated you already have added value because you've standardized the process and potentially you've been able to streamline that process as well removing redundant um removing any redundant steps as well real quick if you're getting value from this video do let me know by hitting that like button as that's really going to help me out thanks so you define the process now it's on to designing the solution the 2B solution. And with the lead business analyst, you want to work with the team to redesign this and streamline the streamline the process ready for automation. We have loads of classes in our process mapping course uh, for best practices on how to do that in the different ways, uh, in different ways. So do check that out and we'll put a link in the um, comments below. So during the process definition phase, you've You've been asking questions about these different decisions and these different steps and so you understand why decisions are made and then you can go back to the team in the design workshop to help them identify which steps are redundant um, they may still do them but maybe there's a better way and you working with the lead business analyst for guidance will create the process definition document and that will have everything the developer needs to start developing this new solution. You have the as is process map, what they're doing now, and the 2B process map, where they want it to, what it should be once it's automated. You've got the detailed steps, you've got the screenshots, you've got the clicks and the keystrokes, the details of what the automation will do exactly. And there's other technical stuff, like how the, the users want the bot to be triggered and ha handle errors and notify them if something goes wrong or when something goes right and when it's completed. And so this is why it's really important for you as a business analyst to understand how a robot is built and how it's put together and what it looks like so that you can make sure that you're adding all the details that a developer would need onto your documentation. So the next step is getting the bot built. And no, this isn't the time where you put up your feet. You want to continue to carry on liaising between the developer and the business team because this is crucial now. You've done all the research, you've done the design, 
we know exactly what we're building now, but there may be some additional questions that the developer needs. There may be some concerns that the team may still have. There may be some additional things that the developer needs. Work with the team and the developer to create what's called a test plan so you know that you've tested so that you have all the data that you need to test the robot and you can, you're can you testing the robot in the right way to, so that, that the business is happy that it works as expected. Then once it's built, you'll be working, you or the business analyst or the lead business analyst will be working with the team, the subject matter expert, to test that bot, working with the team to trigger the bot, review the outputs, go through the test plan, and sign off that automation. There may be some bugs that need fixing. You'll have to collect that and report that back to the, to the developer to fix until the user is completely happy that the robot meets their expectations. The final stage that you'll be involved in as an analyst would be hypercare stage. And this is when the robot has been built. The team has signed it off that it works as, as expected in what's called the test environment. And then the bot is launched into the live environment. And so they have what's called hypercare or warranty period or post go live support, which is where you and the developer and the team and the, and the process owner are watching, are watching the bot in the live environment with real data in real situations, just to make sure that it's working correctly. Because sometimes a robot, when it's launched, acts a little bit differently for various reasons to how it, how it was acting uh, in the test environment. Even if the test went perfectly well, sometimes a robot can act differently in real life. So you're working with the team, making sure that every, every, after every run, they're happy with the results. The robot acted exactly how it was supposed to. They were notified when anything went wrong or when everything was completed correctly. And you're working with the business team to feedback to, to the developer anything that needs to be fixed. Once the robot has met what's called the hypercare criteria, exit criteria, it can then exit hypercare. It's ready to go into the real world on its own. With, and you can take the stabilizers off and you have completed your, your first automation project. One final thing before you go, it may not be over right now, there may be one final thing that you need to do, and that's create an automation work instruction. This is how the team should be interacting with the, with the bot, to trigger it, to look for uh, notifications, etc., so that the team and any new additions to that business team knows exactly how to use that robot, but also what they need to do or what process they need to revert back to if the robot went offline. But this is really important because let's just fast forward five years down the line everyone may have left that was involved in this new in this automation project and you have new people in that team so for business continuity you need to make sure that the business team knows exactly how to handle the robot when it's running and what to do when the robot isn't running okay okay so thanks for watching this video and hopefully you've got some great information about what an automation analyst does in day-to-day -day life and if you're loving these videos i'd love if you can tap the like button make sure you subscribe because i release videos every week and if you have any further questions on becoming an automation analyst make sure you write them in the comments and i'll try to get back to you as soon as all right you take care see you